Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dr. Pepper All-Star Hearthstone Tournament. Um, I'm Dart, and casting with me today is Kungin, and we are just getting into our second match. Uh, do you want to do a quick recap on what we just saw a little bit ago? Yeah, we just saw Rex against... Oh, I forgot his name already. What was his name? Do you remember? It's Wasted. Oh yeah, we just saw a game between Rex and It's Wasted, and Rex won with 2-0. Uh, First game with Druid, and second game with Handlock. And uh, next up, we have a game between Kuja and Donidano. And both players are Legend players this time, so it's uh, going to be a much uh, either matchup this time. Exactly. I'm actually so like, really excited to see some really high-level gameplay between these two players. Um... Again, because I am from the North American scene, I do not recognize each player, but as we can see, Kuja is a relatively high legend rank. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that he would be someone who could bring some very uh, experienced deck play into this tournament. Uh, it's interesting like, to see. Okay, go on. Oh, I was going to say, it looks like we are just about to get started. Players do have permission to start the game, so we will be jumping in any time now. Yeah, what I was saying, it's interesting to see. Donidano is currently at rank 6,100 on the Legend Dagger, and none of us have seen such a high number before. It really makes me wonder how many people got Legend this month. Uh... It makes me feel that there's a lot more players in the European scene than there are in North America. Oh, really? Out of Legends. I don't think I've personally ever seen someone above Legend 2000 in North America, let alone up to 6000. Yep. Oh, so here we go. Is it Paladin against... Oh, the Face Hunter. <laughs> what do you think about this matchup? Now, here's the thing. This may not be Face Hunter. This may very well be uh, the hybrid hunter that was actually designed mm. and... Uh, but it does play the Leopard Gnome, though. Yes, so hybrid hunter was actually recently created, mainly by Protohype, and funny thing is, I included a little bit. Yep, there we go, it's a pilot of Shredder. This is hybrid hunter. Oh, I so have not seen this... that deck yet. So this is a relatively new deck. Um, it actually was able to take rank one legend and rank two legend at the exact same time by Protohype and the Rat. Um, oh wow! Impressive. It contains Leper Gnomes, uh, and very obviously all the obvious hunter cards such as Animal Companion weapons. But then it curves out into Piloted Shredder, Low Step, and High Main. So it has the crazy early game that Face Hunter does in terms of the damage output. Its mid game is actually a lot of Rush minions, and those include mm -hmm. Wolf Rider and Arcane Golem. And then it finishes off with Shredders and High Mains just end the game with just big, uh, very valuable and difficult to remove minions. So what cards do they generally remove for the High Mains and Shredders? So they do not run anything like Hunter's Mark. They don't have Web Spinners anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Do they, they have the Worgens, for example? Oh, they took out Worgens also from Face Hunter. It, okay. I think they, they took the most effective cards from both decks and just threw it in one deck and it just made it work. It's it's one of those weird situations that just worked way too well. Um, and a lot of people just didn't know how to answer it. it. It was the kind of deck that really got people by surprise at the very beginning in terms of just not knowing what they were up against. You would see, like we're seeing right now, it's just a leper gnome. Yeah. Uh, Glaive Zuka. So right now we would expect that the Paladin thinks he's facing a face hunter. Exactly. That's uh, that's why it's so good to have uh, mixed decks that are mixed up like that. Because when you think you're facing a face hunter, you will definitely play the game differently than you would if you were fighting a mid-range type of hunter, for example. So what can the Paladin really do here? I guess does he options? Does he drop the? Yeah, he can. Oh, yes, several options, I guess. Shredder, Consecration, and also Bot and the 1-1 one, one to contest the units. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, I think right now that even though Consecration would be good, it just doesn't leave him with a great follow-up. Yeah. Maybe just dropping... If he expects it to be Hybrid Hunter, which it is, I think Pilot and Shredder would be best. That way he could follow yeah. a Coghammer uh, mini-bot play. 
And exactly. just kind of try to ride out this damage at first. You have to think ahead, and the next turn is probably Cog Hammer and Minibot, so it kind of leaves out that option this turn. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if it was Face Hunter, I would think that uh, that the Consecration may be worthwhile to kind of reduce some of the yeah. damage we're getting pushed through right now. Oh, he went with this play. I mean, it kind of screws him over the next turn since he doesn't have a good turn 5 play. Mm -hmm. So again, I think the reason he did this is because he expects Face Hunter. He yeah. does not realize that it's a hybrid version that actually curves out into big minions. So he might have mm -hmm. not planned ahead for it, which again is it's a hard decision to make because you just don't know when you're facing uh, the Leper Gnomes, the Glade Zuka, and the Abusive Sergeant. So the Paladin is at 19. Uh... You just shred your face here, you can put him down to 13 life here. Which is very close to lethal and it's only turn 4 right now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think this I think is the point where you start going face. Off. Yeah. You could have had and, I mean, 5 damage and actually put him down to 8 if you really needed. Yeah. You but let the Paladin do all the trades for you basically. Yeah, yeah I just slam everything into face. Gen. I would consider actually doing what he's doing in terms of mm. killing 1-1 one, one in order to possibly play around a quartermaster. Even yeah. debatable how much that matters. Um, well, it's pretty good since otherwise you can kill the Shredder and possibly consecrate everything. So I, I like that play as well. Uh. So this just shows the power of this hybrid hunter. Not only do you get down to 15 health by the hunter's turn 4, but now you're dealing with a Shredder. So you have to not only clear the little minions that came with the Face Hunter version of it, but now you have the most efficient four drop in the game to try to clear off this board. Um, what do you think Donnie Dano's best move here is as a Paladin inside? Oh, it's really rough. I mean, he kinda has to consecrate. I mean, he's basically dead the next turn if he doesn't clear this somehow. But even then, he's still... I don't know, man. Every play is looking really bad right now, to be honest, isn't it? I think it's necessary to just concentrate and kill off the Shredder. Yeah, that's what I was Not thinking optimal. as well. Yeah, hope for the best, that the Shredder doesn't spawn something really good. I guess the equality isn't terrible, mm. but hacking, cog hammering, being a fan oh. of that bubble. That's a devil that's perfect. That's exactly what he wanted. Um, yes. Also, the hunter doesn't matter that much right now. He just needs to ride out all the hunter bursts at the moment and hopefully draw into a lay on hands eventually and just kind of get him back into this game. Mm hmm. What do you think about, uh, yeah, Creeper and just Hero Power here, compared to Shredder? Move. His, yeah, exactly. His other option would be the Shredder, just to kind of have the big minion out, the one that's difficult. But at the same time, if he does play the Shredder, that's going to get traded into, which actually you don't want. So right now, I yeah. think with the Unleash in hand, you want to take advantage of just being up against a Paladin and just hope that he plays as many minions as possible and use an Unleash combo to finish the game off. Yeah. yeah I think I would Hero Power here. His, the, his health is so low and you also have a quick shot and a Lay on Hands is in three turns, so you should have him dead by then. There he goes with the Shredder, it seems like. I don't think that's an incorrect play by any means. No, definitely it, not. Both picks works. Definitely, definitely a difficult decision to make there. Hmm. Well, Muster will never be a good play. <laughs> oh. Since it's unleashed. So hopefully it doesn't do that. I think we're just going to see Shredder hero power here. Yep. And then attack and totem just to kind of get it off the board. The only issue with this is this lethal from the hunter side. He would have two from Unleash going to the face, four plus three. Nope, not just yet. 
<laughs> oh, that's a half for. Nope, one off lethal. One off lethal. We're close. Yeah. But we don't know the deck list, so and I would be surprised if the Paladin plays any heals other than Lay on Hands. Uh, some of them play the two mana heal, but it's mm -hmm. not that common. Yeah, trading here, I guess that's right, putting him at two. <laughs> no, I think the reason he's doing this is just in case of like an Argus. Uh, yeah. What's the card I'm thinking of? Oh, Holy Light. The Holy one Light. Two yeah. mana for six health. Mm hmm. I've seen it on ladder, but it's very unusual for Paladins to play that card. I don't think it's good, personally. Okay, here we go. So, the Hunter needs... Oh! I mean, why didn't the Paladin attack in? He could have got in the same totem and healed himself up. He had a small... No, I mean, the only, yeah, the only outs he had was killing oh, the no. I thought Kucho was about to do some BM and shoot himself in the face. Okay, we've got a good sport here. I think he realizes he's on stream, so he wants to be nice about it. <laughs> but I think one of the problem, like he had a, I mean, this hunter deck is really insane. If you get the double left burst, or if you have a good start, I mean, it's definitely stronger than face hunter. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can see it having worse starts now and then than you have with face hunters, and that could be a little bit of the problem for the deck, I think. Now, if you start with the high mains and stuff on your starting hand and treaders instead of the lower minions. But I haven't it, seen the full deck. I think yet, it's so. actually the same kind of thing because you still have two leper gnomes, you still have two one drops, you have the double abuse of sergeant, so that makes four decent choices to start off. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, double knife juggler, which are also decent. You have double mad scientist, and you have double. Oh, you have mm -hmm. So you have quite a few cards at the very beginning that you can start yeah. with. So it, it, that's why the deck has just been doing so well, both on ladder and in tournaments. If you still have that crazy early game that Hunter just innately has, but then you also curve out again into those big bombs that just are impossible to get off and just continue doing damage to the face. Yeah, it, it's really rough to deal with Treader and High Mains against Hunter since they have their hero power as well. I mean, usually the Hunter will have you semi-low at that point, so you have to trade out those units. And while you're trading out those units, it's really hard to, uh, you know, do anything else and actually getting ahead of the Hunter at the same time. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, uh, we have Druid against the uh, Handlock here. It's, uh, is it Donny Dani on the Handlock? It's Zoo more than Handlock, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoo, sorry, my bad. My bad. <laughs> I just saw the Warlock. <laughs> now I see the Same cards. Time, I think we did see the Voidcaller, which kind of shows that it's more of a mid-range type Zoo mm -hmm. versus the full-on kind of mini Zoo. Wow, this is a really good start for the Druid. Almost it's perfect, hard. more or less. Imagine. Dr. Boom is gonna be out... Oh, it's gonna be out turn 3, right? Like the legit turn 3. Yeah, legitimately yeah. a Dr. Boom turn 3. Oh, I wow. This is the best possible hand you can have versus a... Zoo deck. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sue is still a heavy favorites against Druid, I guess, lately. But at the same time, uh, Donnie Dano has a really good move here. Yeah. If he uses Thyrolf Alpha and Abuse of Charge and trades off and mm -hmm. has three minions, a 2-1, a 2-2, and a 4-4. Definitely. Even Dr. Boom also... might... I was going to say, even Dr. Boom might have a little bit of difficulty dealing with that. Yeah. He also has a potential implosion into Alpha Wolf, which is one of the strongest plays in the deck. Mm -hmm. The implosion does really well against Dr. Boom as well. I mean, since the 1-1s one can suck up the bombs. Exactly. But at the same time, it is oh, Dr. Wow. Boom, which is not going Yeah. Through. I mean, if he did not have the Dr. Boom now, he would definitely... Ooh, swipe. Ooh, swipe. Swipe. Swipe is a better move. Should be the better play here, yes. Definitely the better play. And then he can't. I mean, usually Warlocks want to use the Implosion on turn 4. And if he swipes now, he doesn't really have a perfect turn 4 play right now. So I would definitely swipe here. Would you even clear the board here? Swipe Hero Power? I'd... The only issue with that is he really doesn't have a turn 5 play. So I think I'll just leave the Dire Wolf Alpha up for now. I don't think yeah. it's enough to warrant using an Innervate here. I agree, I agree. Now, if he had a 5 or 6 drop, then I would have considered it more so. Yeah. But... 
kind of awkward turn here. No, I, I love Imp Gang Boss. I think it's just one of those cards that opened up so many deck possibilities for Warlock. Uh, it's a really good card, of course, but you would rather drop it on turn 3 than turn 4, of course. Absolutely. Uh, but it, it seemed like Zoo was very much lacking in cards after the Undertaker nerf, after um, Soulfire was made to be one mana. So I, I, I like any card to kind of bring back decks that were sort of, I guess, destroyed by Blizzard. Here we go. Is it a four? Oh, it's a three. <laughs> I, think, I think we're bad, though. Uh, I always get the, the twos, personally. Now, does he... Oh, no. Well, oh, okay. He decides not to attack a Boombot. Interesting. The one thing I think he could have done is actually use Power Overwhelming, attack into a Boombot, and hoped that the Boombot would just go right into the Power Overwhelming uh, minion. Mm -hmm. That may have actually so... been something he had done... So if he did that in the, or a different order, if he used Power Overwhelming on his wolf, attacked a Boombot, then it would have actually been a 33% chance of the Boombot doing... Or actually it would have been 25 because an M comes off the M boss to do absolutely nothing. If that um, makes sense. I think uh, Emperor is the play here, right? You can play Scenarius to turn off there with coin then. Scenarius for 8. Ooh. That's a good boom. That's a good one. Wow, if we can get a 1 4 now, holy shit, that would be you sick. Do four four. Damage? Oh, uh, no. no one. <laughs> but definitely Emperor here. Having double Doom Guard on hand is something you never want to see. It's <laughs> extremely yeah. terrible. Losing That's a Doom Guard is not good in any kind of way. Hard in this matchup. Uh, so I should definitely trade here, yep. Now, do you expect to see Scenarius here, or would you more so as your Drake and just use um, Keeper of the Grove to kill off the Doom Guard? I think you kill the Doom Guard here. I mean, the Warlock doesn't have a hand at all. So, uh, when you get rid of that Doom Guard, he doesn't have much power left on the board. I would definitely go for the Drake Keeper here. And then scenarios, the upcoming turn. I like that. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Is his best option in the current board state. What? And definitely the Drake Keeper first. <laughs> Keeper is still a very good card in terms of silence. What do you think? What minions could this warlock have that the silence can make a big difference? Ooh. I'm not really sure why he would play Lotheb here. I think he wanted to do that more so because of mana efficiency. Um, mm -hmm. the less and less useful as the game goes on. Meanwhile, the Azur Drake at four mana is just as useful in order to keep cycling. So I, I think that's the major reason behind it. Do you think he should still go for the... Yeah, he's going for the value <laughs> trades there. He's seen the swipe already. Yeah. It's actually not looking that bad for the Warlock as long as he draws like fairly decent. He's definitely a favorite here, I think. I but Imkong boss has done work so far. As it always does. Yeah. He has a Drake into a tomb or uh, the two damage wrath the cycle will be a pretty reliable play at the moment. So Wrath to kill the Juggler to draw, then he'll mm -hmm. run the 5-5 into 2-3. And then would you um, cure power off the Imp Gang boss or the 1-1? One -one? Hmm. I guess you kill the Imp Gang boss. I mean, other, he doesn't have anything to kill your mu minions if he does that. I mean, uh, if it if it kills the one one, he can can he clear both the other minions then? Depending on what he draws, he could at least. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that Argus is going to 
those situations are very hard, I think. I mean, if you want to... Hmm. He could actually clear both units with Argus here, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. If he does that, it'll leave him with a 1-3. One, one... Actually, he's not clearing both. Ooh, because the Wolf won't give a 1-1 one, one damage to the Imkang boss, so he only has 3-3. Three and three. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So the Imkang boss is probably... Oh, I would expect Just here going into Lothab, Lothab then. To trade into the Lothab. Yeah. Then Argus, and then probably Voidwalker. Yeah, that seems to be the only play right there. I mean, he kind of has to put everything on the board against the Druid mm -hmm. at this point and just hope for the best. Hope that the Druid has a really bad hand with like a Wild Growth or Innervate or something. It's definitely an awkward turn. Yeah, you never want to leave a spell power Drake up either. I mean,. They have a swipe or something, the game is over right away. Oh, he's actually oh. killing that, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I like that play. I like, I like that. that play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like definitely the best play, I think. Well played. Hmm. I like Angel of Lore here, I think. Or would you prefer to Scenarius? The issue with Scenarius is you can't hear a power the 1 1 off. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if you play Scenarius now, you can also play a Shade and the Ancient of Lord the next turn. That's true. So maybe he's thinking about this curve there. And Defender of Argus again. So I think here I like trading the 2 2 into one of those. Um, the mm. And then I would actually well, Argus up the. Exactly, okay. Yeah. You save as many units as you can here. You basically put everything in one life and kill the Lothab. Except I think... Yeah, well played. So he did that a little bit differently than me. But I like that. I think he did that well. Mm -hmm. I think that was actually better than my original play. Well, he only really has one option here. How much damage does he have the... Just 10 damage on board. Oh, that is definitely scary. But he knows he doesn't have any Doom Guards left, and I think he used one Power Overwhelming as well. So the only burst he has in the deck is most likely one Power, power Overwhelming at this point. I wouldn't be surprised so, if the Angel of Lore heal here, just to be kind yeah. of on the safe side, and then to be mm -hmm. on the shade to follow it. Especially by having the big game hunter in hand now, he doesn't yeah. have to see Giant play. Oh, I really wish we could see the deck lists. It's interesting to see what they could potentially draw to have a chance. I mean, if he's even playing Sea Giants. But he definitely should play Dr. Boom at least. Just can always swing. Get... Oh, wow. There's a Melganis. Wow. Yeah. But no demons on the board. It's a little bit of a problem. And that big game hunter is actually going to... Yep. Make it... That Melganis actually hurts Donnie Dano. In any other situation, it would be the best card to draw, except for this one. Yep. Do you... Like, if he drops it here, what does he do more than just trade out the... Ugh. He would have to I trade out almost... the entire board. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Do you tap here in any situation? He knew his opponent's hand, he should tap. Yeah, I mean, he has to be afraid of the force combo as well. Does he die if he cleared out the unit to force 7 plus 14? If he taps, he would actually die, yeah. So I guess they have to play the Morganis here, otherwise he's, uh, he's pretty much... If he taps, he's dead to force combo the next turn. So I think he's what he's going for right now is by killing yeah. them off. He's hoping that the Druid has no damage no to kill off his Morganis. Mm -hmm. But... As we can see, the big game hunter is going to make short work of it. If he did not draw the big hunter the previous turn, he would definitely have been in big trouble here. I wouldn't be surprised if he can see. Just slow him down the double shade yeah, here, I, I think. Yeah. 
double like check. Through, to through to the claw hero power isn't bad here. Mm. Yeah, I guess that's really good as well. Again, I don't think there's really any situation in which no. uh, Don and Dano. Whatever he does is winning the game at this point. I mean, I, it's good. It's nice to drop the shades down since they grow. Uh, and he doesn't have any Doom Guards left anyway, so he can't really do anything. Like, whatever he draws, this is going to be two minions on the board without charges. Kuja just had the absolute perfect curve with that Druid this time. Uh, zombie Chow, Wild be Druid, mm -hmm. There's just not much you can do about a move like that. Savage will give him lethal. So the higher legend player wins once again. Let's see how long, how long do you think this will last? I would say the first five matches will be the higher ranked player wins. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, I mean it depends on how big the difference is between the ranks. But I mean, rank three hundred against six thousand is pretty big. Personally, I've. I mean, I don't consider myself as a super, super good Hearthstone player, but I have never been past 3,000 on the Legend rank, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I gotta give it to Donnie Dano. I, I don't think he made any misplays. He played no. both games mm. very well. It was just like Kuja had all the cards necessary to take the games. You, you just I mean, can't beat a Zombie Chow, Wild Growth, Innervate Druid. <laughs> exactly. I mean, everyone at Legend rank are always good players. I mean... Even the best players can be at rank 6,000 now and then if they are testing out new decks and things like that. That's usually how you fall on ranks when you're trying out new decks that you might not be used to playing or just, you know, trying to exactly. find a new deck that no one plays. But once again, we are going to go to a quick break while we wait for our third match. Thank you all for